Okay, in this lesson I want to look at solving some word problems with differential equations. Just a couple of things to note. Uh, we define displacement as being the change in position. Uh, let's just put in x for position. We define velocity, instantaneous as velocity as being the rate of change of displacement with respect to time, or the rate of change of position with respect to time. I could put dx dt in there as well. They mean the same thing. Uh, the derivative of displacement will always be the same as the derivative of position. Um, and acceleration we define as the second derivative of displacement or uh, the first derivative of position. So one thing to note you know, with some of these problems we're going to be looking at, and particularly in this class I'm going to be looking at a problem involving acceleration, you know, dv dt is also was a possible option for a substitution in for a. That's always one thing. Okay, that's always a possible option. But note, remember that dv dt, using the chain rule, can be written as ds dt multiplied by dv ds. That's what the chain rule says. Note, you know, those kind of s's cancel to leave me with dv dt if I was to do the multiplication. And ds dt is precisely what we said v is, so we can write that as v dv ds. And so v dv ds. So when we're given acceleration, you know, we've got different options for substitution. We could put in the second derivative of displacement, we could put in the first derivative of velocity, or velocity times the derivative of velocity with respect to displacement. V d V d s using the chain rule. Okay, so one of the things in this class is going to be uh, figuring out which substitution to use. Generally, it'll be one of these two. Sometimes one of them will work better than the other. Sometimes they'll both work. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of examples um, on how to solve these things. So an object moves, so it's deceleration. Notice it says deceleration there and not acceleration. That means it's slowing down. Is equal in magnitude to the square of its velocity. It's equal in magnitude to the square of velocity. So uh, I want to kind of translate that line from English into the language of mathematics. It also says its initial velocity is 20 meters per second. So there's some initial conditions. So what's that saying? Uh, initial velocity is 20 meters per second, it's saying v is equal to 20 when t is equal to 0. Okay, initial velocity of 20 meters per second. Also, any time that t is equal to 0, uh, s is always equal to 0 because there can be no change in position if there's been no change in time. So it's saying that v is equal to 20 when t and s are equal to 0. How far will it have traveled when its velocity is 10? So I'm going to try to cha change all that stuff into kind of English. In fact, let me make this part of the whole thing. So an object moves so that its deceleration is equal in magnitude to the square of velocity. So it's equal in magnitude to the square of its velocity. So its deceleration is equal in magnitude to the square of its velocity. Okay? But if its velocity is positive, that'll mean its acceleration is negative. Okay, here its velocity is positive in each of these cases. What we're saying is the velocity is always going to be equal to negative the square of the velocity. That's the first thing. So that's my equation that's given. It's saying a is equal to negative v squared. It's also saying its initial velocity is 20. So it's saying initial conditions v is equal to 20 when t is equal to 0. And remember, displacement is also equal to 0 at that moment in time. And then the question is saying, find s, its displacement, when v is equal to 10. So that's just been translated from English into math. So, you know, it's an important thing to be able to do. Think about that stuff. a is equal to negative v squared v is equal to 20 when t and s are equal to 0, and then find s 
when v is 10? That's the question. Okay, so my process is this. I'm going to start with a equals negative v squared. The acceleration is equal to the negative of the square of the velocity. Remember, it's equal in magnitude to the square of its velocity, but it would be opposite in direction, so the negative is in there. The acceleration is going to be negative. So which, which of my substitutions to use? Well, one thing I'm noticing here is we're trying to find s when v is equal to 10. So we're looking for an equation that kind of uh, compares the variables s and v. So if we can solve for s in terms of v, well, then we can solve this thing. And if I think about my substitutions here for a, uh, this substitution kind of gives me a connection between s and v. This brings in time, uh, and this talks about s and t. So this connects v and t, this talks about s and t, this talks about v and s. So I'm going to use the third one there. So I'm going to say, if a is equal to negative v squared, then v dv ds is equal to negative v squared. So uh, now I have a differential equation. My jobs are to separate and then integrate. Dividing on both sides by v squared will give me 1 over v on the left. v divided by v squared is 1 over v. Multiplying on both sides by ds, and keeping this negative sign over here, we've got negative ds. Now I'm going to integrate. We've separated, now we've integrated. I'm keeping the negative 1 factored out over there. And uh, we're going to find the antiderivative of 1 over v, which is, of course, the natural log of the absolute value of v. And that's equal to negative s plus c. Now I'm noticing here that the velocities are always positive in this case. So actually, the absolute velocity value of a, a positive number is going to be positive. So actually, I can just put in the natural log of v is equal to negative s plus c. And so that's what we have here. I'm going to try to solve for s in terms of v. So s is going to equal to uh, the natural log of v, or c minus, let's write it as c minus the natural log of v, subtracting the natural log of v from both sides, and adding s on both sides. So c minus the natural log of v, that's going to be s, whatever s is. The next thing is to find c, the constant of integration. So I want to find c, the constant of integration. I'm going to look at my initial conditions. So what do we know? Well, we know that v is equal to 20 when s is equal to 0. So we know, substituting in, but v is equal to 20 when s is equal to 0, because of course if t is 0, then s has to be 0 always in every question. No change of time means no change in position. But v is 20 when s is 0, therefore just substituting in, 0 for s, 0 is equal to c minus the natural log of 20. Solving for c there, c is equal to the natural log of 20. Therefore, my particular solution in this case is going to be s equals the natural log of 20. Subtract the natural log of whatever v is. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find s when v is equal to 10. So when v is equal to 10, s is going to equal the natural log of 20. Subtract the natural log of 10. And if you know your rules of logs, that's equal to the natural log of 20 over 10, which is the natural log of 2. That's my displacement. What will my units be? Well, everything's in meters per second. This is displacement, so my units will be meters. Okay, so uh, S is equal to the natural log of 2 meters. So natural log of 2 meters.
Okay, so we've used a substitution um, to solve that question. So have a go at that. Make sure you follow every step. The big thing is the translation process from English into the language of mathematics. That's always the most challenging. Then it's just choosing a correct substitution and solving a differential equation. In this case, uh, uh, first order separable differential equation. Hopefully not too much problem with that. Okay, in my next lesson I'm going to answer the same question but using maybe a different substitution and it'll be a bit longer winded but it's worth having a look at because I do want to uh, get across the idea that there's more than one way to kind of solve this problem. So I'll do a separate lesson on that. Uh, practice these things and make sure to use the new conversation section uh, that thread to, to let me know if there's any problems.